Jacob Belchak says, uh, engaging liberal brain, which is his way of saying this is a sarcastic question, and good for you, Jacob. I'm embarrassed to ask these questions with a straight face myself. How can you be against welfare when the biggest recipients are corporations? Also, the states that receive the most welfare are under Republican control. Exclamation point. How can you be against welfare when the biggest recipients are corporations? First of all, I'm not sure that's true. I am not, sh I'm not saying it's not true. I'm saying I'm not sure it's true that corporates get more, corporations get more money in welfare than the individuals in this country. However, let's say it is true. Once again, your progressive brain has decided that since you can't win the argument on the basis of facts, you're going to make an argument, put it in my mouth, and then defeat that argument. That's called a straw man argument. My answer to this is, uh, why do, uh, how can you be against welfare when the biggest recipients are corporations? I'm against corporate welfare. One hundred percent dead against it. I think it's evil and wrong. I think it screws up the economy. I don't think corporations have any business getting welfare. I don't think anybody gets any business taking money from someplace else to give to somebody else. Period. Full stop. End of discussion. Uh, you're waiting for your argument, are you? You're not going to get one. Of course, corporate welfare needs to be ended. Next question. Um, I think we already talked about this in business that the states that receive the most welfare are under Republican control. The states that receive the most welfare are states like Alabama, Mississippi, uh, deep south states that have never gotten over uh, the burden of slavery or the, or the entitlement caused by the burden of slavery. That's why they get most of the welfare. Uh, I guess that's per capita. It certainly can't be the most welfare per dollar spent, but I have to look into it. Uh, these are relatively low population states that have a relatively high dependency uh, issue and problem. Uh, and by the way, uh, to say that they're under Republican control means that they're recently under Republican control. They're under Republican control because uh, they were run into the ground. Uh, so there you go. Somebody just mentioned, uh, uh, Raphael uh, Lebovitz just mentioned uh, that uh, I just posted something on Facebook about uh, tax. Uh, just coming off the taxing, let me just say this. I thought this was one of the best answers I ever had, actually. Uh, the um, well, I got a question on the show I do with Andrew Clavin at PJTV saying, what is the definition of a good tax? And I did four minutes on it, or three, not counting the filler that Andrew does. It just Andrew has a couple of words to say. He just mostly provides filler and, and a chance for me to have a drink uh, while he's talking. But basically what I said was the definition of, of, a, of a fair tax would be what is the minimum amount of money required to run the federal government according to the enumerated powers as outlined in the Constitution? In other words, grab your Constitution, find out what the government is authorized specifically by the Constitution to do. That doesn't mean everything and not prohibited by the Constitution. What does the Constitution say the government can do, the federal government? Find out what those few things are, find out what they cost, and pay the minimum necessary to do that. That's the definition of a reasonable tax. Period. Boom. Simple. Um, so moving on, uh, Christopher Dale Goodwin says, why don't you conservatives care about poor people, single mothers, black people, Central American immigrants, etc.? I think by this point, when I took the questions, I just grabbed them. But I think by this point, to be honest with you, Christopher, we pretty much covered this. Uh, keeping poor people forever poor is not caring for poor people. Making poor people dependent on the government for the rest of their lives is not caring for them. It's keeping them slaves. It's keeping them little pieces of wood that have to float down a river. We don't want them to be slaves, and we don't want them to be inert humans whose entire life consists of waiting for the next handout. We want them to be fully human individuals in control of their own destiny, which means in control of their own resources. We want them to be in control of their own resources. While I'm here, let me just d demolish quickly this idea that conservatives or business people somehow like people being poor because that's good for low wages. Listen, a company is in business to sell things. That's why a company is in business. I know this kind of fundamental stuff just makes progressives' heads explode because they never heard it before. They think that corporations are in business to collect money for the rich people that run the corporation and enslave everybody else. No. Corporations are in business to sell things. That's what they do. Now, when you sell something, if you sell it for less than it costs, pretty soon you will not be able to sell those things anymore 
because you will not be able to maintain the operation. It's like an organism that takes in fewer calories than it expends. If an organism takes in 1,000 calories and spends 1,500 calories, that organis organism gets thinner. Sooner or later, the organism starves, and then it dies. However, if you sell something and, it, and you sell it for more than it costs to make, then you can continue to sell things, and you can start selling better things, and you can improve the quality of things. You can add new things to sell. All these things happen if you sell something for more than it costs. So while it's wonderful to, um, to have uh, low labor costs as part of the equation, what it ultimately says, society-wise, what we want is customers. In other words, there's no point in having cheap labor if there aren't any customers. And the richer people are, the more customers we have, the more money they have to spend on the stuff that we're selling. I'm speaking as a business person now. We don't want poor people in this country. We don't want any poor people in this country. Poor people don't help us at all. Poverty is not an asset. Poverty is not a uh, part of the manufacturing equation. If we could have richer people, or I should say, if we had people who were who were who had the kind of habits in life that made them rich, it is true they would cost us more in terms of manufacturing what we sell. But since we make a profit on what we sell anyway, a richer population means that we are actually making more money as businessmen. Don't you see, you idiots? Don't you idiots in the progressive movement see this? If we follow your argument to the logical conclusion, we business people like poor people because it means low labor costs, then that means that we can make our products less expensively and sell them to fewer people because everybody's poor. The less we sell them for, the less money we make. The more we sell them for, the more money we make. It's in our interest to have a rich population rather than a poor population because even though labor is higher, labor is not the entire equation. The richer people are, the more they pay for our products, the materials don't change in price, the energy costs don't change in price, the amortization, the insurance, none of that stuff changes whether the population is rich or poor. So while low labor costs may be good on one end of the balance sheet, it's never in the advantage of business people to have a poor population because the poorer the population is, the less of our stuff they can buy. We don't want to sell less stuff. We want to sell more stuff, you idiots. Of course we want rich people. We will negotiate labor costs as low as we can get them because that's just good business. But when it turns out that, going back to your fast food example, if it turned out, that every single fast food person in the country decided that we're walking out unless we get $15 an hour, then there's very few fast food companies that could afford to pay that because now you'd have to start selling $20 hamburgers, as we said earlier, but there are probably a few that could afford it. Most of those people's jobs are going to be turned into automation. And so we'll still have low labor costs. You see, it's not so hard. We want rich people. Conservatives like poor people making money because number one it's good for business but even better than that we are in fact decent moral people who work hard and would like poor people to keep the results of their work and get rich because I've been around poor people and I've been around rich people and I've certainly been in poor neighborhoods and I've been in rich neighborhoods and I can tell you which one I'd rather walk through right this business that conservatives need poor people is the biggest lie that they tell. And the reason you can tell them that it's a lie is because you are not even, if we really are greedy, you gotta at least follow the logical consequences of being greedy. And if we really are just nothing but money grabbing greedy bastards, then having rich customers is in our interest.